Okay, now I'd like to summarize a little bit, in particular to highlight the model that we're talking about when we talk about uniform circular motion. The definition of when we can use uniform circular motion is when we're talking about a point or an object that has constant angular velocity. That means that we're going to have constant transverse or linear speed, but we do in fact have a changing velocity vector because it's changing in direction. There's two situations that we can apply this to. One is if we just have a particle moving in a circular trajectory. So that is basically a rock on a string. And again, it should be at a constant speed. So you're always making the rock travel in the same circumference at the, in the same amount of time, which we call the period. There's a second situation, which here it's described as points on a solid object rotating. And this would represent, for instance, a bug sitting on a record that's turning. So the record itself is turning, and we're then looking at a bug that's sitting on the record. To really talk about a rotating object itself, we actually need to get uh, many chapters ahead, but right now you shouldn't be seeing a situation where that's an issue. So again, usually we're going to talk about a point on a rotating object, not the entire object, but a single point, or a particle moving in the circle. So for instance, rock on a string. So mathematically, we can relate our tangential velocity which is the magnitude of this uh, linear velocity vector. We can relate that to our angular speed omega multiplied by the radius of the circle it's traveling in. Now, the big thing that we've talked about here uh, a lot is the idea of centripetal acceleration. This a vector here, it points towards the center of the circle, and for uniform circular motion, it's going to have a constant magnitude. So this is not uniform, uh, sorry, this is not constant acceleration because the direction of our acceleration is changing, but it has a constant magnitude and we know it always points towards the center. We typically define a one direction to be positive, which is counterclockwise. So in this case, we would say that this is a positive angular speed because it is going counterclockwise. And again, specifying that explicitly is very helpful, labeling it that way labeling that on your pictures is a great idea. Uh, finally, you can only use this if your rotation isn't steady, meaning if something is speeding up and slowing down, you can't use this. So that's one reason why when I talked about the rock on the string, I said it should be a horizontal circle. If you're going uh, up and down due to gravity, it's probably not going to be constant. Another situation to think about is a person riding a Ferris wheel. If the Ferris wheel is speeding up or slowing down, you don't have uniform circular motion. But once the Ferris wheel is turning at a constant rate, well, in that case you do. So keep in mind that you can't always apply this model, but you should be able to identify situations in which you can. A lot of the ideas that we've introduced here will be returned to in future chapters. And the big thing to realize is that there's analogous variables and equations for uniform circular motion that relates back to uniform motion when we had no acceleration in the linear direction. So we will continue on and in the next sequence of videos talk about what happens when you don't have uniform circular motion. The big thing here is to recognize when you have circular motion and to not break it into x and y components that that's not going to be helpful and the reason we've introduced these circular variables is because those are typically the best way, the simplest way to uh, analyze these problems. Finally, whenever you're dealing with centripetal acceleration or a circular motion situation, that's going to point towards the center of the circle and that represents, at least in this case, for uniform circular motion, the change in direction of your velocity vector. So even though you're transverse, uh, sorry, your tangential speed is constant, the velocity vector is changing direction, therefore we have an acceleration.